You're listening to luthier, musician, and 1995 National Heritage Fellow, Wayne Henderson. Welcome to NEA Arts Online. I'm Josephine Reed. Born and raised in Grayson County, Virginia, Wayne Henderson's music and craftsmanship is deeply rooted in the Appalachian Mountains of his home, and he's determined to make sure it remains a living tradition, teaching young people the joys of playing traditional music and handcrafting its instruments. Henderson is a marvelous guitarist with more than 300 ribbons at Fiddler's Conventions, performing at Carnegie Hall and the Smithsonian, as well as touring throughout Europe and Asia. And he has a giant reputation as one of the country's best luthiers, making mandolins, fiddles, banjos, and particularly guitars. To own a Henderson guitar is to own a superbly crafted handmade instrument. The waiting list is a long one, made up of the famous and not-so-famous. A neighbor is more likely to get a Henderson guitar than a star. Henderson runs his workshop like an open house, with folks dropping by, watching, learning from him, and often picking a few tunes. Wayne Henderson learned guitar making from a neighbor when he was a boy, and he's passed that knowledge on to many apprentices, including his daughter Jane, who now works with him as a luthier in her own right with a four-year waiting list for one of her guitars. People have been known to wait for 10 years for a Wayne Henderson guitar, something a young Wayne could never have imagined as he struggled with his first one. I started making guitars far back as I can remember. People in this, you know, Appalachian region, most of everybody were farmers and didn't have lots of money, you know, to go out and buy fancy instruments. And uh, there was one that Mr. Bowler had a nice old Martin guitar that he got somehow way back in the 40s. And uh, he always had that thing, and it was the best guitar in the community. And he would let me look at it, and I wanted one of those things so bad I couldn't stand it. But absolutely could not afford one, you know, and me or my family, either one. So I would go up and look at it. You know, I always made stuff. I've always been a craftsperson. I whittled and carved and made all my toys when I was a kid. My mom did too. My dad was a pretty good good carpenter. You know, he could make do stuff you needed on the farm. My grandpa was a great craftsman. You know, he they, they built houses and made caskets and all kinds of things. And so it was always in my family, you know, to be a craftsperson. So that old guitar, I'd look at it and I'd say, This thing ain't made out of nothing but wood. I should be able to make one of these. I had a hard time getting much done because I had, you know, no materials and tools and just what was on the farm. But I, I fashioned out a, a guitar. Trying to find material was really a challenge because I knew those sides had to be bent somehow, and I had no idea how to do that. I had observed a piece of walnut veneer in my mom's dresser drawer bottom. That the veneer was real thin, but it was walnut, pretty wood, and I noticed it was flexible. And I thought, well, that stuff will bend if I could get that off there. So I bent that and, and glued it together with the only glue I had was some old black rubber stuff that my dad put weather stripping on his truck door. And I'd seen him do that, and so he just stick it, and it sticks right there so he didn't have to clamp it and stuff. And I thought, well, that's the ticket I can do that, you know, without having forms or clamps or anything that I didn't have and didn't know how to make. So I worked my whole school vacation between farm work and stuff, getting that guitar made. And then when it got August, and heat and humidity set in on that. I had it out in the outbuilding where nobody had been seeing it and, and had it almost done. Had the body made and the neck made and everything. And uh, when uh, I went out there one day and it got hot and that spring is still left and that walnut veneer and that old rubber glue got hot, that thing just totally came apart. And I was so disappointed. And my dad could tell there's something wrong with me, you know. That's why I told him I tried to make a guitar. And of course, they wasn't into that guitar making. But his father saw Wayne's interest and made him a promise. He said, the next time it's a rainy day that we can't work on the farm, I'll take you over to see a fellow named Albert Hatch. And Albert was a 
fiddle maker, had made some fiddles. So one day, sure enough, he did. He took me over there, and I couldn't believe Albert. He got a fiddle out that he had made in 1953, and he had quit fiddling or making it too, but he'd raised in his family. He worked in a factory. But he got that fiddle out and showed me, and he saw my interest and in all this, and he helped me, and he told me how to bend a piece of wood. He gave me a piece of wood that somebody had thrown out of an old door and it was mahogany, and he said, son, this thing's, this is a piece of mahogany. It's the same thing a Martin's made out of, and that just drove me wild, because the it was thin, eighth of an inch thick, and, and he told me how to take a hot pipe, metal pipe, and uh, get it hot, and then wet the wood on the inside and just bend it around that pipe. And sure enough, that worked. And I don't know how long it took me to ever bend that set of sides, but I got them bent. And, uh, put that guitar together and he also told me to get some weldwood carpenter's glue. He said that'll hold it together till the cows come. And sure enough, it did. That guitar's still together. I still have it. And that was about 1964. It took me another whole year to make that guitar. But uh, Albert was a big help. And then he turned out to be a, an amazing friend and somebody I knew as long as he lived, you know, and, and played music with him. I got him back out to play in music because he played that played the tune on that fiddle he made. And that's the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. I couldn't believe it. And that gave me the idea that somebody's hands in this neighborhood could build a beautiful instrument. So that was encouraging. Then when I that worked that year and got that guitar back together, I took it, couldn't wait to take it and show it to Albert. And when I went over there, what he was the biggest help at, he was real encouraging. And when I showed him that, that old guitar was a pretty rough, crude, operation for a guitar but it worked and played and uh albert looked at it and he said lord son if i know you could have made this done this good i'd got you some better wood a henderson guitar sounds like no other Musicians are able to pick them out immediately. I like a nice, deep, you know, woody tone, you know, that, uh, that happens by cramming your braces lightly in the top, and, and uh, they have to be left heavy enough so your instrument will hold up, you know, under the stress of the string. But uh, if you can get them carved down to where the, that top vibrates at its best, you know, the most it will do. You can hear that. I've always had to learn to do it by just listening. And, and my daughter, since she's been helping me build and building her own stuff, I was trying to teach her. It's hard to teach somebody how to listen to a piece of wood, the tone that it has. And she said, why can't I put a tuner on it? And we tried that, and sure enough, it worked pretty good. The tuners they have now, little electronic tuners, you can tap it, and it'll read out the C, D, or whatever, and uh, it works really, really cool, and that's what she does most of the time, and their guitars turn out and sound really good, and uh, she also learns by listening to it, too, that, but it, for a little final inspection, it's pretty cool to be able to read out that that top is tuned in a C chord, which I think is good, because it's the middle of the scale, and when you get it tuned to that, it, it looks like I always do it. That's pretty cool. Wayne Henderson is also a believer in the theory that a guitar needs to be played in order to develop its sound. Almost every instrument you make, when it gets played just a little bit, the next day will sound better. And they say, you know, everybody says old instruments always sound better than new ones. But I think uh, those old instruments sound much better when they've been used and played. exactly I'm no scientist or anything but I think uh, those pieces of wood stuff I've always heard and makes sense to me those uh, when you put that string on there and the vibrations from the string you know makes the top move and vibrate and that that creates a sound chamber waves on the inside of the body that you can feel when you tap on it or play on anything you can feel air come out the sound hole I mean, something's moving there somewhere, and uh, 
the grain of the wood runs from the back end to the front end. And those sound waves travel through those grains of the wood. And they say the more they do that, it lines up the molecules of the wood and it gets them in line with each other. The more they vibrate, those sound waves travel through the piece of wood. That makes sense to me that they would do that. And the more that happens, the easier they go through there. They get lined up, and less resistance. The most no noticeable time they can hear that's when you first string up an instrument. When you put string it up the very first time, sometimes it'll sound wonderful as soon as they put a string on it, but it always gets better just in a few hours and then the next day for sure. And uh, then after that, it slows down. You have to play on it a lot to notice much difference, you know. And Wayne Henderson does play a lot. He's one of the best bluegrass and old-time guitar players going. One of Wayne Henderson's first and most influential teachers was a guitarist who lived up the road, local legend and 1988 National Heritage Fellow, Doc Watson. In the 60s, I got a hold of the Doc Watson record. And, you know, Doc didn't live 45 minutes from right here, you know, but I'd never seen him or heard tell of him. And uh, when he started putting those records out in the 60s, I couldn't believe my ears that anybody could play a guitar like that. Henderson explained what made Doc Watson's playing so distinctive. Well, it was a new thing to us then. Doc, back in the 50s, played in a rockabilly band that would play all kinds of gigs they could get. And uh, sometimes they would play square dances, and they did not have a fiddle player. It's more of a rockabilly band. And Doc, when they played for a square dance, would play a tune like Down Yonder or Turkey in the Straw or any, any old fiddle tune like that for them to dance. And you'd have to, when they start dancing, they want to dance for 20 minutes. And I've heard Doc tell me before he'd play those tunes would feel like his arm is going to fall off. But that's how he learned how to do that so good. And so by taking fiddle tunes and playing them on a guitar, Doc Watson reimagined traditional mountain music. When he started making those records, he fell back on some of that stuff that he knew how to do that almost nobody else had ever done. Certainly not out on national recordings or anything. And he'd also take old songs, you know, that people, country songs that people would sing and turn that into a guitar instrument. Well, that was a new thing. And I, I was just could not believe my ears when I'd hear that guitar, you know, what he was doing on that. And then, of course, he started trying to learn how to do some of that. late 60s I got to meet Doc because he lived close by and I ran into him over in a music store in Boone, North Carolina and he I was sitting there picking a Carter family tune, uh, Cannonball Blues, I still remember that and I heard this voice behind me, I was sitting on a stool in that store picking, playing that and I heard somebody singing I around and I turned around and sure enough I thought it sounded familiar and I turned around and it was Doc walked up, sang that song with me and I like to fell off the stool you know and he was a super nice guy. And even he'd done been making records and stuff then, and, and he was, uh, you know, getting well known. And to me, he's somebody really famous. You know that Doc never did act like he was famous, and didn't even want you to even mention anything like that. You know, and he just wanted to be a regular like everybody else. But he was certainly was special to me and everybody else in the world. And uh, he was one of my biggest influences. Just as Wayne Henderson learned from Doc Watson, he's committed to passing the music on to the next generation. To that end, he works closely with JAM, junior Appalachian musicians. And over two decades ago, he started the Wayne Henderson Music Festival, which raises scholarship money for young musicians. And the winner of the highly competitive guitar playing contest actually gets their very own Henderson. Contest is always really good, and a lot of people show up early in the day to see that. Then we have music, usually somebody I can trade a guitar for if it's a big shot. It's a totally volunteer organization and nonprofit, and every bit of the money that we make goes to into a scholarship fund that's uh, distributed out every year to kids to learn how to play this music. 
You know, it's a cool festival. It's up in a, the most gorgeous state park you've ever seen right here in the, this community. People really seem to enjoy it. And my only job mainly is to select, you know, who I can get to come play. And, and that's always somebody good. You know, we Doc come and did it like three different times. And the very first festival we ever had was successful. Some of the best music you'll ever hear, you know, comes from right around here. You know, my goal is to promote this music in general and anything I can do to help or preserve it, I have to always try to do. And uh, if I get a new instrument strung up, it just seemed like as much fun as ever to hear that first tone and sound, you know. I always sit and play them and listen and try to figure out, you know, what makes this one sound good, you know, that kind of thing. And it's always exciting, good thing to do. That's luthier, musician, and 1995 National Heritage Fellow, Wayne Henderson. You've been listening to NEA Arts Online. I'm Josephine Reed. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.